conversation with somebody else and like being able to bounce ideas off somebody means so much whenever you feel kind of isolated and you're like prepping to make really big decisions about your mm -hmm. life and where you're going and stuff. And it makes such a difference to have that support. So I'm happy yeah. to give back any way I can, you know? Yeah, for sure. And I'm glad I'm happy to get started now. It's, um, the, it's 501. Uh, for this workshop, uh, I actually want to hand it over to you, Lydia, and you'll, you'll be able to lead it, present it. Uh, you can do whatever you want. For people who already joined, I want to give a quick um, agenda for today. So a lot of you are still doing the prep courses. Some of you got accepted into boot camps and you're preparing to finish the prep course. Some of you are just starting out and you're figuring out uh, and you might be getting stuck. So please ask Lydia questions. Uh, she's here, she knows what you were going through. Um, and throughout the conversation, uh, post your questions in the chat, but also share your Twitters so people can start following each other. Uh, this is as much as of you learning from Lydia, as much as you meeting each other and connecting with each other. Because if you see that Anita is on here and she's asking questions about JavaScript, well, you could reach out to her through the app and just introduce yourself. And we got Caleb on here. Caleb, what's going on, man? How, how are you hey. feeling? I'm, I'm good. I'm like a day away from transplant now. Tomorrow's my stem cell transplant. Mm -hmm. Finished up like chemo and radiation. And you know, I'm just really optimistic about it. Yeah, man, we're sending you our love and prayers. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate you joining in and uh, joining the community. We're going to be there for you throughout the whole every step. So I'm glad that you're on. Uh, it looks like you're at a hospital, but I'm glad that you're on this call tonight. Thank you. I'm different. Sure. Yeah. And I want to also just hand it over to Lydia before I do that. Uh, I'm gonna share a link to a group I created in the Career Karma app. Uh, you'll have to click on this link from your mobile phone, but when you do, you'll actually join a link with Lydia. So after the call, if you wanna ask Lydia further questions offline, you'll actually be, I called it a Lydia study group. Lydia, feel free to rename it, but you, by clicking on this link, you'll join Lydia and then you'll see other people in there and you can ask questions and this could be your little circle. Cool. I'll hand it over to Lydia. Lydia, take it away. Yeah, sure. I actually, I made a slide deck a couple months ago and started a presentation. So I don't know if any of you were there. It might be a little bit redundant, but I'm going to start over with that and kind of tell you a little bit about my background and uh, how I ended up getting into Lambda and ended up in San Francisco. So I'll go ahead and share my screen here. Let's see. All right, wrong way. Here we go. All right, so career karma. So hi, I'm Lydia. I'm originally from uh, a small town in Indiana. And uh, I moved out to San Francisco just over a year ago, about a year and a half. Um, Let's see, a little bit about, oh my gosh, I don't know what's going on with this keyboard, but that's all right, I'll just do this. Um, so a little bit about how that happened. Um, I saw a post on Reddit about a data analytics program that had kind of an, an ISA, like a lot of the software engineering programs do now. Um, and it was kind of the first time I had ever like seen anything like that or that it was possible to have a school actually invest in you um, instead of the other way around. So I was really interested in that and I, I had zero experience in tech. I had zero experience with any of that stuff. I was selling gym memberships at the time and um, I went ahead and applied anyway and took all these tests and uh, I started um, writing essays and studying for interviews and I ended up getting in. And so, so it hadn't even like crossed my mind that I would actually get in. I just like 
started showing up for stuff and uh, like didn't cross my mind that that would be a thing. Mm -hmm. So once I got in, I had to figure out how I was going to move out to San Francisco. And so uh, mm -hmm. I ended up, it was kind of like this, the stars all aligned. Like I ended up paying off my car. Like I think it was like one month before I got in. So I was able to sell that and <laughs> use that money to come out here. Um, so it was just kind of a whirlwind. I just sold everything and just left. And then, so what, it, what did I learn from like that experience of just like kind of upheaval and like leaving everything behind? It's that um, I'm just as qualified as anyone to learn really difficult material. And so are you. Like that's one thing that I didn't know whenever I came out here was that like all of these things that I did, like just showing up and putting in the work to get where I was ended up like making me just as qualified as anyone else to like keep showing up and keep doing the work. And you know, like the more you do that, the more you'll experience just like exponential growth. Like you don't even know, you don't have to know what the outcome's gonna be to put in the work and like be of service to other people and you know, do all the things that like the best version of yourself would do, you know? Um, so what I'm going to cover today in this lesson is just how to learn and then for loops in JavaScript and then I'll kind of open it up to questions about like boot camps in general, um, other technical questions you have. I'll try to answer those as best I can. So learning how to learn. Uh, first of all, be patient with yourself. Like there's no person learning engineering who just has it all together. It just doesn't happen. Um, so I like to think about these four levels of learning. So whenever you go into something like before I started Lambda school, I was unconsciously incompetent. Like I had no idea all of the things that go into learning something like React. Like it, it just couldn't have uh, occurred to me like every piece of that puzzle. So then you slowly become conscious of your incompetence as you get uh, introduced to all these topics. And it's really hard. Like this is where I would say most people give up. You know, they see this giant hill ahead of them that they have to climb and they say, well, it's not for me. But like, I'm telling you now, if you get through this point and you realize that everyone has to go through this to get to where they're consciously competent and then like, you know, unconsciously competent, like eventually you're going to know the material so well that you don't even realize, you know, you don't remember the struggle you went through to get there. And um, I notice that disconnect between teachers and students a lot too. It's like, once you know all the material, it's hard to teach it to somebody else because you forget where all those blind spots were. Um, but, but it is uncomfortable and it's, it's good to like recognize it and see it as this because everyone goes through it and um, it's not ever a reason to get discouraged. So keep pushing. All we have in life is our actions and our reactions. And if you show up and do the work and make yourself available to opportunity, you'll always find opportunity. Um, so that's kind of my, my spiel about uh, like learning and um, staying sure of yourself and stuff. It's all just, you know, 90% of life is just showing up for stuff. And then the rest falls into line um, with that. So, all right, so on to JavaScript for loops. Why would we use a for loop? So when we're building an app or a website, we want our data to be dynamic. We want our app to work even if we introduce new data. So that's um, a really good reason to learn about for loops. So, and then sometimes we want to perform an operation on every item in an array or an array of objects. Um, so it doesn't make sense to only select one item at that time. And I actually, I had a code pen put together, but it was making my computer really slow. So I went ahead and just did a, a REPL really quick. So I want to show you an example of like how to access an element of an array and then kind of explain from there why you might use a for loop instead. So we have an array here of just numbers. And so array zero would point to the zero index. So whenever you look at an array, 
um, the index always starts from zero. So instead of counting like one, two, three, four, five, it would be zero, one, two, three, four, five. So um, I can show you here, if you console log array zero, you get one. So it's just the first, and then so like, Say I said array two, which number do you think I would get? Anybody? One. Um, two, three. 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 Yep. Um, okay, but what if we wanted uh, every number in the array? So that's kind of why we would use a for loop. Um, and Lydia, can you give can you give some examples of maybe uh, like people are used to uh, maybe having like a Twitter feed, right? So what would be an example of uh, an array or a list of items just so people can start visualizing what like in their everyday life as they're encountering encountering things? What are arrays? Sure. So an array could be actually a lot of different things in like a Twitter feed. So it could be the actual Twitter feed or it could be like a list of comments just anything you want to display that's like multiple things. So um, like in Instagram, the actual like photo with the comments and everything, that's an array of those components. So this, this really uh, shows up everywhere in every app, <laughs> any list yeah. of things, so. Yeah, and just to also add to that, to break it down to, for people who might be hearing about it for the first time, Basically, when you're dealing with computers or JavaScript, uh, you have some data, right, that's stored in your database. And this data could be your posts, it could be comments. And when a user opens up a page, now you need to tell the computer how to get some data that's just ones and zeros, right, on a page. And the user, what the user sees is a list of posts or the list of comments, but in the database, it's actually stored as just either text or numbers, right? And so it's your job as an engineer to be able to uh, tell the computer, like read this data and also display it. And arrays are the instrumental part that you use to uh, get this data out of just data form and actually put it somewhere on a page. Yeah. Definitely. Thanks for that. Sorry for interrupting. I, no, I just, no, I'm glad. Sorry. Jump yeah. in any time if you, if you, because uh, I think there's like a study that shows whenever you're like sharing your screen and like typing and going through code, you're actually <laughs> like forty percent less intelligent than normal when you're at a computer. So, uh, Jessica also had a question. She asked, uh, "So the comments on the picture, it's an array in an array?" Question mark. Yeah, so the comments would be, um, I guess, the way I would think about it, actually, let me see, I might be able to show you guys on draw.io. Let's see, so I'll just... And as Lydia is, is um, as she's uh, pulling up, uh, whatever she's pulling up, um, the, reason, the reason it's important as you're learning how to program, it's important for you to understand how loops work is it's basically a new concept that's, um, that's foreign to a lot of people because in your everyday life or anything else that you've learned in life, you never had to learn about loops. But loops the way you learn about loops is it, it's you need to develop you need to develop a mental model in your in your mind understanding how does a loop work and at first when you just hear us explain it or lydia explain it or you read somewhere it may not make as much sense because you haven't built the mental model in your in your mind yet that's why after a lot of repetition and using different examples that's that's gonna um start clicking for you the the good part is that in programming there's only about uh maybe three or four concepts that you need to understand and have a mental model for for that 
for you to know how to code. And one example of a mental model is um, addition, right? If we look at addition, uh, people don't memorize uh, what each what adding two integers is. Most people have a mental model of what it means to add seven to eight, right? And we understand how that process works. And if you just explain it to a four-year-old, they may not understand it because they, they just haven't encountered enough numbers uh, to be able to do addition. But if a four-year-old like did spend 100 hours playing around with blocks, right, and adding four blocks to five blocks, counting them, they actually build up a mental model that helps them now apply addition to a lot of different things uh, in life, right? And same thing with loops. Um, eventually, you'll have a mental model of what a loop is. And if, you're in, if you don't understand it now, don't worry, like, that's okay. Everyone who first finds out about loops, it seems foreign to them, but just stick with it and keep practicing because at some point it will make sense. Cool. Lydia, go ahead. Sure. So I just made like a quick little diagram of like what maybe Instagram would look like. So this is like, if you think of each of these blocks as one post, this would be like an array of posts, right? So this would be like post number one, two, three, four, and five or zero, one, two, three, four. <laughs> and then if you look at this, this is just like one single post. So you can think of each of these pieces of the post as a component. So maybe you have an image here and then you have an array of comments here. So it would be an array inside of a ra an array, but it would be kind of segmented by components. So um, it's, I guess the way I like to start thinking about things as just like in little tiny pieces. Like, I don't know, I, I guess I'm, I, I'm better at like speaking to things I've prepared for, but um, I don't know, just as like a little visual, I'm a visual person. Yeah. No, but. that's super helpful, I think, for a lot of people. Sorry for taking you off tangent. <laughs> no, no, it's good. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh yeah, so. So if we wanted like each of the numbers in this array, um, I wanna go over, I guess, the anatomy of a for loop really quick. So you have like the actual beginning where you start the array. So you could think as, of i as the, would you call it the uh, initial index or the iterator? Uh, it would be like the, uh, let's see. Um, I is just like, it's just like a, it's a starting point. I would say, I would refer to it maybe like as a starting point of your array. Right. So if, so in this section of a uh, for loop, you would have like four let I equal zero. And let is just saying that you're uh, creating a variable. So you're saying I equals zero. So you're telling I to start at the zero index of your array. So if we look at this array, we're telling I to start at zero. So that means we're starting at the number one here. And then in the second part of this, this I is less than array I dot length. Um, if we console log array I dot length, what do you think we'll get? Probably num a bunch of numbers right here. Yes. So what are some guesses? How many items are in the array? That's exactly right. So um, even though the array starts from the zero index, whenever you access the length of the array, it's actually the number of items. So it's usually um, the, uh, the index is usually goes as high as one number less than the actual uh, length of the array. So, um, but since I have it from one here, so if we started the array at like its index of zero, 
you can see the difference there. So then whenever we count it out, it goes to five, but then the length is six. So <clears throat> just to give a visual of like the indexes. Um, okay. Does that make sense to everybody? Like these first and second parts? I mean, if it's similar yeah. to the whole Java thing where you get, when you can round, if, if that, is it like the same thing? What's that? That's like on Java, where you put round and everything, is it like the same? Um, I'm not sure. I haven't done too much with Java yet. Um, but then, so, um, yeah, just like this is just the starting point, and then this would be uh, how far you actually want the loop to go. And then this last part tells you like how to get there. So we're saying each time we go through this loop, add one more to I. Whoops. So, uh, so we start I at zero, and then we're going to loop through. And once we get to the end of this loop, we're going to add one to I. So then I starts at one. And as long as it's less than the length of the array, which we saw here is five, it's going to continue going. So on the first iteration, right, it'll be, i is going to be zero. So actually, the index will be zero. So, But in the actual array, the number will be one, right? So since this is index zero. So that's why it counts out one. And then as we go through, it's still less than the array length. So we add one to I, and then we continue through up until we get to five. And then since five is equal to the length of the array, um, we stop our loop. Lydia, can I ask you to, to do a little update to this? Do you mind? Um putting um, like in, 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 on top of line 21, do you mind just putting another console log and uh, maybe console logging the index so people can see what the value of the index is and what the value of the I is. And maybe you can even say index like a string that's, that says index and then comma and then the actual, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so there it shows um, as we go through, like the index and then the number of the in the actual array. That's a good idea. That's a way better way to show it visually. So, and I, I and I want to add that this is important because this is this gives you a way to now access data out of the array using the for loop. So instead of you having to manual because the array could be a million different items, right? So instead of specifying up front and telling the computer that you have to perform the same operation a million times, you're just using a for loop to say, keep going and keep going and perform the same thing over and over again, which is actually something that computers are amazing at. They, it'll just keep going over and over again until the condition is met when it stops, right? And condition is I is less than the, the length of this list, right? Yeah, so um, I'll show you some other examples here. Uh, so we could have like an array of strings and it works the exact same way. So you can see item zero, one, two, three, and four. So that just is the exact same. And then actually before I show that, could anybody walk me through how to do this backwards? So start at item four and go to item zero. Craig, what do you think? Can you can you handle it? <laughs> You're muted, by the way. Yeah, I was going to type it out. I was going to guess at it. Um, if you change the I index to um, instead of zero, starting at five, 
to go back. You said to go backwards. Yeah. And then instead of, uh, oh man, you could do I minus, is it minus minus? Go backwards. Am I am I far off? No, that's that's right. That would just um, be at the end. What would we need to do to tell our? Um, if the I is um, greater than the length. No wait. But still, uh, I would still need to be as long as it's less than the length, right? Because you still want to go five, four, three, two, one, zero. Yeah, I was about to say that. Super right. close. You just one, said two, it when you were counting backwards. Two, or four, three, two, one, zero. So you want it to be once it got once it got to be. I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm already confused in my own head. It's it's yeah. A, you're uh, so it, close. Um, right. It's still less, uh, the I is less than array length, dot length. So for this, um, we would want to set, like, since I equals five, five would be the array length. So we need five to be uh, so, greater than, or I'm sorry, we need I to be greater than the length. We would just need I to be, this is like, a fine way to do it if you know how many items are in the array. So like I equals five is perfect. Um, but for this, we would want to do um, I, as long as I is greater than zero, okay. right? That's kind of what I was trying to say, but I said length instead of, as long as it's greater than zero. Or, if, it's, if it's larger than zero, it's going to keep doing it. But once it equals zero, it's going to stop. Sorry, I didn't know there would be homework. No, no, you're no. Doing, this is good. You're doing, yeah, that was awesome. Uh, yeah, let's give a Craig a round of applause. It's not a, it's not a better in my head. <laughs> Hi, Tamar. How you doing? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna mute again before my dog works. This could be greater or equal to zero. So you were right about that. I um, I'm made the mistake of just saying I is greater than zero, but it's greater than equal. So, I mean, there's always stuff that comes up. Like, I think last time I did one of these um, talks, I like forgot how to access object arrays or I was doing something wrong where <laughs> nothing was working. And I mean, it just, it's um, it just takes time to be able to like troubleshoot things in front of people, and I just think it's so cool that you're willing to like, you know, try to answer stuff in front of people. It's not an easy thing to do, so that's so cool. Is there there's a dot reverse also you can use, isn't there? Can you use that in an array? I think that's an array um, an array method, yeah. Like for ES six. Yeah, because I was thinking I did a reverse string uh, code challenge one time, and I think I used dot reverse to make it work, I think. But I think instead Sorry. of um, displaying things this way, like one at a time, array dot reverse would just turn this entire array around. So item four, item three, item two, item one, item zero. But that's a good way to like switch things around if you wanted to just still do uh, the for loop in the same direction. Um, you normally would where you start I at zero you could reverse the array and then do it that way so yeah um, let's see yeah so we got that I have another example here of um, I actually I think it's the same example of reversing the array yeah and then maybe we want to include additional information with our array elements. So like maybe greeting my roommates, right? So um, I have this array of our names. And so if I wanted to say hello to each of us, I can actually do the loop the normal way. So starting I equals zero, and then I is less than array three dot length. And then I plus plus. Um, let's see, 
And then instead of just console logging the array i, I can actually like interpolate the string and add like a hello, comma, whatever the name is. Oh, maybe not. Let's see, syntax error. Do you see where that might be? Oh, let me see. <laughs> Let's look at the, the, this is actually a comment. So whenever there is, um, Whenever there is a, an error, you always want to look at it and like read it first. So it might be one of your comments. It look like our brackets backwards. Right. Or if you if you just undo it, I would just try do, doing con command uh, Z just to see to to bring it to the state when it was working. Right. Okay. So it's something yep. in here probably. So what I would do, Lydia, and this is this is good advice for everyone who wants to do some debugging. Um, Whenever your code doesn't work, always think of it as like, all right, let's use the process of elimination to find out what actually is broken, right? So by with computers, you can always undo your code. So you just bring it back to the state that it's working. And then you basically like, I think you wanted to come out, you wanted to um, execute line 62 to 66, right? Mm-hmm. So if you just if you just uh, uncomment that those lines and see if it works, can you try that? Yeah. Whoop. So let's let's try that and see if it works. Yeah. Okay. So now you know you know you know that that worked, right? Right. So so now you just have to work your way backwards, and uh, you probably need to. Like the lines up here, it was probably the asterisk that was uh, messing it up. So if you just remove, uh, if you just remove on line 54 and line 61, I think that should fix it. All so right. if you just do that. Yeah. Yep, cool. sure enough. Awesome. <laughs> no, that's really, that is so important though. Um, I told one of my friends, uh, Scott Moss, about the the last um, presentation I gave where I was just super nervous and I kept uh -huh. running into errors and stuff. And I mean, that is, you can't get better practice than that because you're, it's code. You're going to have it break and you're going to have other people watching you and stuff. <laughs> so yeah. getting used to being uncomfortable, like talking about it and trying to answer things is... I mean, I don't think there's better experience you could get. So. Yeah, I think uh, there was a question here from Craig in the comments. Um, he asked about the back ticks versus. Uh, um, I don't. I'm not sure, Lydia, if you can see the comments, but yeah. Greg asked. So on line 65, is it? Um, can you use the back ticks? Yeah, so you can use either back ticks or that, so, or string interpolation. So this, what I'm doing here is string interpolation, but you can rework this. Um, you can take out the back ticks and just add quotes around the string. And then um, a comma, and it should give you the same thing here. So there's just multiple ways of doing everything. So um, I'll show you this again. It's it's that's not awesome. I just had never I had never used the interpolation with the I just never done it before. That's really cool to know how to do that. I didn't know. Yeah, that's what I was yeah. Asking. definitely comes in handy too. Um, like if you have a really long uh, string of things like or you have different types of data that you're putting in, it's really a lot easier to use interpolation sometimes than adding quotes and commas everywhere. You can just do the back ticks and then put a variable in anywhere as long as it um, has that dollar sign and the brackets around it, so. Yeah. All right, and then I have one example here of how uh, you would access an element inside of an array of objects. Um, 
do you guys want to look at that or do you have any questions about um, for loops or accessing elements in just arrays? I think people probably have questions because I know some people are probably seeing this for the first time. Um, sure. What are people? What are people? Uh, people's questions about while loops or functions. Stacy, Thomas, um, Mary, Tasha, Anita. What questions do you have, Jessica? Trust me, everyone feels uncomfortable in the group chats when there's more than two people. It's normal. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, someone asked earlier, uh, or they mentioned they get confused between for loops and while loops, if you could explain the difference, I think. Sure, yeah. So a while loop will just continue on until you tell it to stop. And actually, I hardly ever use while loops because I'm so scared I'm going to break everything. <laughs> Let's see, so I'll just look at um, some examples on W3 schools. Okay, so you can just do while and then give it a condition. So it looks like it's kind of laid out the same way as a for loop, just a little bit different here. So I'll just copy and paste this into REPL. In REPL, I highly recommend just like making an account on here, because if you ever find like pieces of code anywhere on the internet, you can just throw them in here and play with them and get used to whatever you're looking at. Um, so while i is less than 10, um, so this condition is like the condition in the middle of the for loop here, right? So while i is less than array three dot length, uh, do this thing. So this would match up with like the console log here. So here we're saying text plus equals the number is plus i. And then here we're, it's showing us how to iterate. So it's adding one onto i each time. So I guess um, does anybody want to walk me through like what they think is going to happen with the while loop? Guess we can just test it out. <laughs> okay, so I is not defined. Um. So uh, I think, uh, Lydia, I think since you pasted text, we haven't defined the variable text anywhere. Oh, right, yeah. So you might have to define it uh, on line 68 or above it. So, so yeah. So there's oh. another one because we di didn't define uh, I either. <laughs> right. <laughs> I I really don't use uh, while loops all that often. Yeah. So and just so, great, and just so people also know, uh, you can with coding a lot of the time there's more than one way to do something so you can pretty much do anything you would do with a for loop with a while loop and vice versa so this is just like ha having like a like a knife and uh maybe some other instrument to like cut things you can cut it with both tools yeah so does that mean we should find the one we're comfortable with I think at some point, that's a great question. I think at some point after you do enough uh, of coding problems, you'll start kind of, you'll start having your own go-to functions. And in some cases, like as you progress through the journey of you becoming a, an engineer and like a professional engineer, you'll just know the little minute differences between while loops and for loops. And you'll start using them, but overall, at this point, it doesn't really make a difference. You can accomplish the same, the same goal. And in this case, the goal is to get some data printed out, right? So you can do that with e either of the methods. Um, it's, it comes down to like how I said the example of different knives. At some point, there'll actually be a difference, whether it's like a bread knife or a 
meat knife if you're trying to cut something. But at this point, it's just another tool that you should know about just so you're aware that it exists. Right. And so if, if you just like play around with this stuff too, it's easy to like get familiar with it again once you've learned something. Like I've noticed at uh, Lambda School that like a lot of things that we learn are like skimming the surface. Like we'll go really deep into something for one week. And so there's no way like I'm just one person. There's no way I could keep all of that information in my brain, right? But, but once you're introduced to it, it's like, oh, I have this problem. I know all of these tools that I could solve it with. And so it's, it's good to be able to just like continue to learn as you go. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure like even after I graduate Lambda, I'm going to continue studying and like looking into things I've already learned over and over again. <laughs> so, um, yeah. But I mean, it, you know, it just takes a couple minutes of playing with these variables to see like, oh, here we're going from, so like since I is two um, and we're starting at I, I guess, right? So I is two and then we're adding one each time we go through the while loop until 10. But if we wanted to like iterate through a lot more numbers, we could just add you know, then we can go to 100. So while I is less than 100, it'll continue adding one each time, right? Mm -hmm. I, th I wanna see, there's a few questions in the chat. I think Anita asked, um, how would you write a function that returns a character at the index? For instance, if I put Anita and number two, I would get i. Get back i. Okay. To write a function that returns a character at the index. Um, so I need a do index yeah. of method. Because I know there's like an index of um, command that's possible to use, but I only know how to utilize those in arrays and not in like a string. If that makes sense. Yeah, I think that you. A lot of those are just array methods, but there are some tricks to turn strings into array arrays and then back into strings. So like, um, let's see. Nita, so say we wanted to use an array method on this, we could do, um, let's see. Uh, let array equals string dot split. And then if you just split on uh, nothing, like you can put quotes with nothing in between them, it'll just split up the letters and turn them into um, elements in an array. So let me, I'm gonna get rid of this. Array is not, oh. Right, so here we have an array that's all the letters. So then if you wanted to get the index of something in this array, you'd be able to do that, right? Okay. All right, thank you. Yeah. And, and, I, and, I, and I, and I want to point out that coding, it's about manipulating data. So you can, like Lydia said, you can turn strings like a word into an array, or you can turn arrays and numbers into strings. And as you're practicing different things, you just become good at understanding how to you take data, manipulate it, and display it to the user. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, there's also uh, a little method to turn an array back into a string. So I'll just show you that really fast. So um, let's 
So you can use dot join. And um, let's see. Oh, and console log the new stream. So then you have Anita back. But the cool thing about this is you can actually join it on anything. So like if I wanted to join it on E, I could actually put an E in between each letter of your name, <laughs> you know, just anything. So um, there are a lot of really cool tools that already exist to like, like manipulate things however you want. And then um, I definitely recommend like looking at the um, MDN array methods and just like going through to see what's available because there's just a ton of stuff you can do with with all this and um, like once you get used to kind of like reading through these and playing with them and REPL, um, then you kind of know what tools you have in your toolbox to just, you know, you'll run into problems that you need to solve and um, it's a lot easier when you've already looked through this and know what's available to you. Yeah, cool. Great. Thank you. I wanna, I wanna, while we still have everyone on the call, I wanna share the link to uh, Lydia's uh, career karma study group. So if you're on this call and you have other questions and you and you want to just be in a group with Lydia and other people on this call, make sure you click on this link from your mobile device and then it will pop up our app and it will add you to a group with Lydia. Yeah, and never hesitate to reach out to me um, directly either. Uh, I know sometimes it's like really hard to ask questions in front of people and it took me a long time to get used to that so there's no shame in hitting me up about anything really i'm happy to answer any questions about boot camp or if i can figure it out technical stuff so lydia we have a few minutes left maybe i can ask you a few questions about your journey and how you ended up here so uh what was the like what was the process like for you to um like i guess find the confidence to kind of start believing that this is something for you like at what point what was the tipping point at what point did you realize that you can actually do this and you wanted to pursue coding um i think what got me really excited about coding was um Actually, SQL was the first time that I felt like, oh, I can actually learn technical skills. And SQL is like a query language that's made for like accessing data from a database, but I didn't know anything about coding whenever I learned it. But I ran all these SQL queries for uh, a company that I, I did an internship for, and all the engineers were just blown away by just these like simple like select statements and stuff and that was that was the first time that i really got uh a lot of confidence around learning technical skills um but i mean i i would say that i have ups and downs with it still <laughs> so yeah mm -hmm. well let's do we have room for probably two more questions um i think do people have any questions for Lydia outside of coding, just overall about her journey, where she is now, how she's liking her boot camp? Um, any questions? Feel free to unmute yourself or post your questions in the chat. Um, yeah. I kind of want, want to know all of the above. I'm considering Lambda so uh, as well. Um, so just how do you like it and where are you in the curriculum? Yeah. Um, the I just started my 13th week, uh, I guess this week is my 13th week, so I went through the uh, user interface, which is the first five weeks, and that portion is like HTML, CSS, and some basic JavaScript, and so that was like, I was really surprised during those first five weeks, I felt like really confident, and, um, and it was like laid back, I was like, wow, this is great, you know, like I'm ahead of the game, feeling really good. And so, and then the second five weeks is React. And that was like a real uphill struggle for me. And I, it was one of those, uh, like where I was at the second level of learning, like the competent or the conscious incompetence where like, I knew there were all these things I didn't know. So that was like kind of painful, 
but I, I also, uh, like had the feeling like I'll never be able to learn this. I won't be able to do it. And now like looking back at those weeks, I've made so much progress just in like the, you know, four or five weeks since I started react. And I'm, so I know the program's working. It's like more of me having this like battle with myself, like, you know, I'm not worthy of learning this or like, feeling like it's too high of a mountain for me to climb when in reality, like it's not too high for anybody and Lambda, they know what they're doing and I do just have to trust them and trust the process because it is working out. So um, I, I would say like definitely going into Lambda, um, make sure, you know, one thing uh, I made sure to do because I, um, I knew it was a remote program and I knew I'd be kind of alone and isolated a lot of times um, is like get on a schedule and like make sure you have some balance in your life like I started exercising about like four or five times a week just to make sure like I'm prioritizing self-care and like making sure that I'm I'm getting all the things I need to actually be like a productive healthy student you know um, and then Another thing about Lambda is I was actually really surprised at uh, at how much I don't feel isolated. So I thought I was going to be like alone in my room all the time and like it was going to be brutal and <laughs> really I was just going to struggle all the time. But like it's so far from that. I um, They have a program where they set you up with a project manager and so you have like maybe five or six other students in your project management group and you meet with them like for the last hour of the day and go over everything you've worked on this week or like what you worked on that day and so you get a real sense of community and there are a ton of slack channels there's you know slack channels about memes and all kinds of interests and there's a lot of really cool stuff going on and there is the community if you're like willing to reach out and be part of it um, and then, uh, and then the lectures, I thought I'd be watching a lot of videos of lectures because it's a remote program. I was like, oh, they're going to have me watching videos, but no, every day is a live lecture and, uh, there's open time to ask questions and get a lot of feedback on your work. Um, so it, I mean, I, I, my expectations weren't that high and they've exceeded every single one of my expectations and I, I couldn't be happier with Lambda, so. Um, let's see, Craig had a question. Let me see, uh, Craig, let's see. Sorry, it was a I question to you. I was gonna, I said I had a link I could share if anybody could use it if you want me to before we leave this. I said one oh. second. The link to what? Just one it's second. a it's a JavaScript intro to JavaScript free course on Udacity. I did it a few months ago, and yeah. for anybody that's very brand new with it, I mean, I mean, if you interested, yeah, yeah, you should share it. You can share it with the group so people who are learning JavaScript they can use it. Um, we have about a minute left. I want to just remind everyone that just don't give up. Everything that Lydia knows, she taught herself that stuff, and. Lydia, was that easy for you when you first started out? Uh, no, no, I had a lot of doubts and I was, you know, even when I got accepted to Lambda, I thought, I don't know what I'm getting myself into. And, and really, I haven't even gotten a job yet and I feel like I made the right decision. So, um, you know, it just, it depends on you and like what you think is right for you. But, you know, I just think that breaking into tech is like, the best way to like move up a class or like become something you never thought you could be. I just see it in all the people around me, like how dedicated they are and how much they love what they're doing. And I, I feel like anybody can find that inspiration and be a part of it. So. Yeah, Lydia, thank you so much for joining. Um, this is incredible and it's so amazing to see you come back and teach others. And I know as you're starting to learn more and more, you're always welcome to come back and teach people more things. And please take Lydia up on this and reach out to her, join the groups. Um, I'm gonna make a small announcement that the Sunday, 
we're actually going to be doing a draft where people can pick their own groups and form their own groups. Um, I'm not sure how many people have seen the video of the FFT squad sharing how they came together. And it was so moving and incredible um, that we decided to create some structure and create a system where people who might feel like they're studying alone can meet other people so they can elevate each other and don't have to do this in isolation. And so um, before we hang up, I'm sharing a link here. So on Sunday at 4 p.m. Pacific, it's going to be 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central. We're going to have a Zoom meeting similar to this, and you'll meet other people looking to pair up with others. And it's going to be your way of just forming your own squad that's going to hold you accountable, that's going to be there for you, that's going to be down for you whenever you need any support. Okay? So thanks a lot, Lydia. It was a pleasure right. seeing everyone. Let's give Lydia a round of applause. Feel free to unmute yourself. Lydia, you're awesome. Thanks, Lydia. Uh, thanks, Lydia. You're thanks, awesome. Lydia. Yeah, thanks, Lydia. Thanks, Lydia. Good night, everyone. Awesome. Good night. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Bye, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Mom. <laughs> oh.